All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's UFC Fight Night. Robert Whitaker versus Ikram Alascroft takes place tomorrow, Saturday, June 22nd, 2024. I'm going to go through the entire card, give you some uh, predictions and breakdowns. Uh, it's not too big of a card, but it, it, I mean, it packs a little bit of a punch. I don't mind it. Tomorrow, or uh, next week's cards, uh, 303. McGregor versus Chandler. That got canceled. We got Yuri Prohaska versus, J uh, J or who is it? Yuri Prohaska versus Alex Pereira next week. But we're going to go through uh, this week's card quick. I'm going to stream it tomorrow night or uh, tomorrow afternoon. I believe it's an early card since it's Saudi Arabia. But uh, without further ado, here we go. The first fight of the night, Bantamweight, uh, Road to UFC Championship, Long Zhao against Chang Ho Lee. I'm going Chang Ho Lee. Uh, he was the underdog going into it. I think he started out as a plus 105. Chang Ho Lee just looks like the... More sophisticated striker. Long just looks like he's he hasn't developed anything. He has, you know, 24 more professional fights than Chong, and they look... Oh, we got to kill the uh, alarm here. Uh, Chong just looks like he, he's been in the cage longer, even though he hasn't. Like, in, in terms of, of cage time that he has total, he he's, sh should be... Te technically, he should be getting beat the shit out of by the veteran Long, but... I'm confident in Chong. I think he has the better stand-up. I think he has the takedown defense for Long. I also don't think this is going to the ground anyway, specifically. I think Chong can uh, just outpoint Long in the three-round fight and uh, earn himself the road to UFC title. Uh, next on the prelims, we got Magomed Godzilla, uh, Godzilla Solov against Brenton Ribeiro. I'm going prob... Mm. I want to go uh, Brenton Ribeiro just because he has crazy fucking hands. He did lose to Zhang. That fight was really close. They both got rocked in that fight. I think I'm pretty sure Zhang got rocked first, and Ribeiro just kind of walked into one of his punches and got dropped in the first round. Magomed's good, but if he walks into the firefight, don't... I mean... Yeah, don't, don't be surprised if uh, Ribeiro chins the fuck out of Magomed. I'm going to go with Ma Magomed Godzilla Slav, but Ribeiro can definitely chin him. I would just pick the under one and a half rounds in the fight. I don't think it's making it to the second round. Ribeiro seems to like the first round a lot, like Sergey Pavlovich and some of these other heavy-handed guys. I would just keep it with that. He's kind of a round one or bust. Just take the under one and a half or just take the round one. Uh, finish in general. I like a plus. I think it's probably like a plus 170 or plus 180. Just take it. Next on the prelims, we got Moon Garufov or Gafarov uh, against uh, Kyung Ho Kong. I'm going to go Kyung Ho Kong. Uh, I like him as an underdog. Uh, he did lose to John Castaneda. It's, that's not really a bad loss. Uh, where was the other one, though? Christian Quinones. Christian Quinones is a pretty good win. Gafarov hasn't even won a fight in the UFC yet. Uh, I don't... Personally, I really don't think he is the caliber of fighter that will survive in the UFC long. I think Kong's probably going to kick him out right here. I think if Gafarov loses three in a row, coming from the contender... Or, uh, no, he was coming from LFA. Coming from LFA... I forgot. He, I think he got booked on short notice against John Castaneda. But, coming from LFA, losing to John Castaneda, and losing his second fight to Saeed Nurmagomedov, I understand. There's a... I mean, two decent fighters, but in the fights, he they, Gafarov just does not look like he belongs. I'm going to go with uh, Kyung Ho Kong, who probably is going to be able to mix it up better, and I think Gafarov is still going to sit there and look fucking puzzled like he does every other fight that it seems. Uh, he's Kong has the reach advantage. I would just pick Kyung Ho Kong. I'd probably pick over two and a half rounds. I think it's probably going to a decision. Next on the prelims. We got Renat Fakhradinov against Nicholas Dalby. I'm going Nicholas Dalby. I think Renat Fakhradinov is a fucking bum. Uh, like, his most impressive win is Brian Battle, and that was Brian Battle's come up when... Well, Brian Battle's still on the come up, but that was his early UFC come up. Um, I believe that was one of his first fights in the UFC, if not the first. Uh, Renat Fakhradinov. No, it was his fourth fight. <laughs> Um, Brian Battle, he, I mean, Brian took that loss pretty well. He's won the last two. He's pretty fucking dominant. Uh, of course, hindsight is always twenty twenty, but I think Nicholas Dalby is a little bit stronger than Renat Fakhradinov. I think Renat gasses out 
quickly in the late second to early third round, and I think Nicholas Dalby has the better gas tank. I understand he's 39 years of age, almost 40, but so far, I mean, after that Gabriel Bonfim fight, he just, or is, no, nah, Gabriel Bonfim, he just looks like the better fighter. And I don't think I can take that away from him. Especially, I don't think it was a fluke win. I think Bonfim just lost to him. Fair square. I think Bonfim gassed. I like right, uh, I like the fight to probably go over one and a half rounds. But um, it definitely can get finished. I just don't... After watching Rina Fakradinov uh, fight Craig Jones in grappling, I just there's some holes in his grappling game, and I don't think he's going to be able to take Nicholas Dalby down. And even if he does take Nicholas Dalby down, I don't think he has the top game in order to keep him there. I think Nicholas Dalby is going to be able to get up, and I think Nicholas Dalby is going to be able to outpoint him. Uh, I don't see Nicholas Dalby finishing him because I think Rina Fakradinov's a little bit stronger than some of the other opponents uh, that Nicholas has had. I think Bond theme's a little bit weak, especially. I think he has a less, less, lesser of a gas tank than Fakradinov, but uh, I would probably just pick the over in this fight. I would probably ignore both fighters, and if you want, I would take Nicholas Delby as an underdog. Plus 300 is pretty crazy for a guy that's coming off a win of an undefeated fighter and looking really good doing it. So I would just take uh, the over or Nicholas Delby. We got Mohamed Naimov against uh, Felipe Lima. I'm back and forth on this fight. I'm just gonna go with Mohamed Naimov. I'm gonna. I'm only going with Mohamed Naimov specifically because Felipe Lima has not fought in the UFC yet. This is a short notice fight. He did have a camp. He did go through a camp for this. It's supposed to be for a different fight, but you can say it's for this fight. It doesn't really matter. This. It's kind of the same opponent. It's just a boxing matchup. Um, Felipe Lima is good. I think he has decent stand up, and I think he has decent ground game. I think he's good at mixing up. But Mohamed Naimov, I mean, he's had three fights in the UFC. The Jamie Malarkey KO is kind of shit. Eric Silva KO is kind of shit. Nathaniel Wood decision. Nathaniel probably could have won that fight. I was going to pick Felipe Lima to start. I'm just going to go Mohamed Naimov. I think these guys are going to a decision. I think over two and a half rounds is your best bet. I wouldn't be confident in either guy. Naimov looks kind of shit sometimes. Felipe Lima is coming in on short notice. Again, he did have a training camp for this, but this is his first fight in the UFC. They don't know a lot about him. I barely know a lot about him, and he just seems to be a decent fighter. I, I genuinely was going to pick him, but I'm just going to stay away because of first-round jitters and because the UFC jitters exist, so I'm just going to stay away. Over two and a half rounds, probably easy. Top of the prelims, we have Nazareth Hackbrost against Jared Gordon. I think this is probably the pre, uh, feature prelim of the night. I'm probably going to go with Jared Gordon. I think Jared Gordon's the better striker. I think he mixes it up better. I think he's going to be able to stuff Hack Pross if he goes for any takedowns. I know Hack Pross does not usually go for takedowns. He's usually a more of a stand-up fighter, looking for the knockout, looking for the perfect shot. I think Jared Gordon's a little bit better at it. I think Jared Gordon's a little bit slicker. I think he's going to be able to roll with the punches, and I think he's going to be able to get on the inside and fuck Hack Pross up, to be honest. Jared Gordon looked really good against Mark Madsen Einerston. That Mark kind of looked shitty against other fighters. He is a fucking Olympic bronze medalist, okay? I, like, Mark was fucking him up in the first round, and Jared clipped... I wish I could find it. I don't remember exactly which pot. Jared was starting to piece him up in the boxing, and this is what Jared does. He starts to gas people out. I think Jared beat Patty Pimlet. I think uh, Jared Gordon purposely got hit in the head on the way down by Bobby Green while he was beating the shit out of him in the first place. I think Jared should be on a four-win streak. That Patty Pimlet, again, Patty Pimlet lost is bullshit. Nazra Hakparast has not beaten anyone that Jared Gordon hasn't beaten in, in terms of uh, UFC caliber, in terms of skill caliber, in terms of, you know, like fighter IQ and fighter uh, performance. He's he's probably beaten better guys than Nazareth has, and the most recent win on Nazareth's fucking shitty ass disgusting win column is jamie malarkey which is the worst fucking like win you can have on your record quinones fight whatever like i don't really count that either so i would just give it to jared gordon i think this fight's probably going uh over two and a half rounds both guys are pretty strong in the chin i think if anyone's gonna get knocked out i think nazareth's gonna get knocked out by jared gordon and i think he's gonna do it probably in the second round so i would just go over two and a half rounds if you're too sketched out if you want to take a finish on the card, you can take it. I just, 
I think it's more likely they go over one and a half or over two and a half than it is that Jared or Nazareth finishes each other. So, we're going to start with the main card. That's the rest of the prelims. First fight on the main card, Vulcan Ozdemir versus Johnny Walker. I'm going Johnny Walker. I think Vulcan's... Uh, I don't know what I was going to say. I think I was going to say... This is what I said before, because I've already recorded this video and I have to remake it because I, when I uploaded it, it fucking broke, okay? Vulcan Ozdemir just seems a little slow. Johnny Walker's chinny as fuck. So this could go either one of way, one of, one of two ways, right? Because it always goes one of two ways. I think this fight's going to end in a knockout, and I think Johnny Walker's going to fucking... I, I just feel like it's going to be a flying knee or an elbow. I don't know why. I think a flying knee or elbow's coming. Like, Johnny looked kind of shitty against Magomed Ankalaev. Like, looked like the closest thing he got was that jumping flying knee. Didn't land. Uh, he's got Anthony Smith on his record. Paul Craig. Young, uh, young Kutalabe. Kutalabe fucking blows dick, right? Vulcan Ozdemir is good. He's beaten Guskov. He's beaten Paul Craig on his record. Uh, last win before that, who was it? It was Rakic back in 2019, which Rakic probably won that fight, in my opinion. So... I'm just going to take Johnny Walker. Take Johnny Walker. Take the under two and a half, under one and a half. I just don't, I don't see this fight going long. Actually, maybe not under one and a half. These guys have decent, like Vulcan has a decent up chin. I think he might make it pass. But I would take Johnny Walker on an even money line. He's probably a nice parlay piece. Vulcan's, uh, I just, I'm, I'm not picking the side of Vulcan until I see him improve. I think Johnny Walker is a little bit better at improving. With his uh, techni technicality, he still doesn't know how to throw a fucking jab with 83 inches of fucking reach. I think he needs to work on that, and I think he can, if he can throw a jab, he would ruin Vulcan's night. Seriously, Johnny can piece him up. If he stays on the outside, Johnny will win this fight purely. Like, he can win by points if he really wants to. He can, he can literally keep Vulcan away from him. He just needs to use his, his reach. That's all he needs to do, and he'll be completely fine. Next on the fight card... In the main card, we got Shara Magomedov against Antonio Tricoli. It's Antonio Tricoli's UFC debut. Take Shara Magomedov. Shara Magomedov is obviously the better pick. He's obviously the better fighter to pick. He's probably going to knock Antonio the fuck out. Antonio's not even close to his caliber. Antonio hasn't fought in three fucking years. Take Shara Magomedov. Antonio was originally supposed to fight Ikram uh, Alaskrov. That fight was moved. Ikram is fighting uh, Robert Whitaker. But... Shara is a fucking demon. Shara doesn't even fight because he has visa issues, so that he only fights in Russia or Saudi Arabia. And he's probably just gonna show up and just beat the fuck out of him because he doesn't get to fight often. So take Shara Magomedov, take the under one and or I take under two and a half rounds if that's what it is. If it's under one and a half, you can probably take that too. I would just take Shara Shara Magomedov probably by KO. And it's probably gonna be like a plus or a minus 150, 180. Add it to your parlay. Kevin Gastelum, or Kelvin Gastelum versus Daniel Rodriguez, getting close to the top of the main card. You have to pick Kelvin Gastelum specifically because it's his, like it's his death fight, man. If he loses this fight, he's kicked out of the UFC. Daniel Rodriguez is shit. He lost against uh, Arich, or, uh, 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 the Leech. That's what it is. Not Arichi Long. Uh, I think he's on a three-fight lo lo loss streak. The Neil Magny, Dars... You know, like, get fucked. Ian Machado KO. He KOs everyone. Uh, the Leech. I thought Lee won that fight, man. I can't give it to Daniel Rodriguez. I think Daniel Rodriguez is kind of low-key shit. He's just an old man. He's just a dad, bro. It looks like he's he's got the dad bod. He's got... He, nickname is D-Rod. Should be called Dad Bod instead. I would just pick Calvin Gaslam. Calvin couldn't even make one... This fight originally was supposed to take place at 170 welterweight. Calvin Gaslam couldn't even make the fucking weight. He ended up uh, over like 182 or something. Daniel wanted a catch rate, a uh, catch weight fight at 180 pounds, and uh, Daniel Way told me, "Yeah, fuck no, there's nothing. That's not gonna happen. Gaston can't even make the weight." So they're at 185. Daniel took a piece of the purse, and I think Calvin's just gonna end it uh, winning. There we go by points. Uh, next on the card, we got the co-main event of the evening: uh, Sergey Pavlovich. Versus Alexander uh, Volkov. I'm going to take Sergei Pavlovich first round KO. That's just how it is. Uh, I don't think Volkov's going to be able to take him down. I think if Chris Curtis can't take him down, I don't think Volkov's going to take him down. I think Pavlovich is going to beat the fuck out of Volkov. I think he's going to end it in the first round, and I think we're going to see him fight for another top contender spot. Uh, probably going to be fighting for the number one spot next. Pavlovich is just a fucking unstoppable machine. 
The odds probably should be... I, they are probably exactly where they should be. I just... I truly don't see Volkov being able to take him down. I think even if he takes him down, Pavlovich might be able to get up in the second round. Like, each round starts standing up. I think he's going to get knocked the fuck out. Just take Pavlovich and take first round. First round's probably like plus 170. Just take it. Main event. I'm going to be streaming this, guys. If you want to come watch with me tomorrow afternoon, early fight card. We have Robert Whitaker versus Ikram Alaskrov. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys didn't mind the picks. If you guys want a nice little parlay piece at the end, stick around. I'm going Robert Whitaker. I think Robert Whitaker is just a better fighter. Alex Crowd hasn't fought and beaten anyone of caliber that Whitaker has. I think Whitaker is going to be able to mix it up. I think Ikram will be able to mix it up in terms of the level changes. I think Robert might get rocked too, but he's a little chinny. I mean, he's gotten rocked in the past couple fights. I just don't see how Ikram is going to jump up in this caliber of, of fighter, right? The Worley Alves and Phil Hawes, you know, you, hindsight 2020, both those guys are terrible. Ikram's have been fed two bums. This is a big step up for Ikram. If Ikram can show up here and he can uh, really impose his game plan and dominate Robert Whitaker on the ground, you're probably going to see him fight for a top five spot next. I just don't, no, he probably will get the number five spot or number four spot if he beats Robert here. I just don't think he's beating Robert. I think Ikram's just worse. I think he's a little bit slower. I think Robert might be able to knock him out. I think he has a head kick available on the left-hand side. Ikram likes to dip his head a little bit sometimes. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I think he's a little bit... Well, I don't know if he's a little bit slow in the reaction. I was actually... I take that back. I, think, I thought he was a little bit slow in the reaction, but thinking back, I think he was just a little bit tired in the fight that I was watching which I think was the uh, Phil Hawes. But I would take uh, Robert Whitaker over over two and a half rounds. Seems safe. Probably uh, Ikram. I don't think he's getting a finish on Robert. If anything, Robert's going to get probably a KO victory. I would just take Robert the Reaper. That's the fight card, guys. I'm going to drop you a little, uh, little parlay piece before I end it. Uh, number one, we're going Kyung Ho Kong. Easy. Underdog pick. Take it. We're going... Uh, I want to go Chong Ho Lee. You probably could add that in there. Uh, I'm not 100% on it. I'm going to go... I'm going to go over two and a half rounds. Calvin Gastelum, Daniel Rodriguez. going to go Sergey Pavlovich, round one KO. going to go Robert Whitaker over one and a half rounds. And you're going to go Shargo Magomedov. Yeah, that seems pretty safe. Or you can add Johnny Walker. Throw it in there, four or five piece, put 20 bucks on it. If you guys want just a little three piece, like easy, I would go Kyung Ho Kong. I would go over two and a half rounds, Jared Gordon Nazarat. And I would go over two and a half rounds, Calvin Gastelum, Daniel Rodriguez. Seems like a lock. Or you can just go Sergey Pavlovich instead of one of those fights and just fucking bat. I'm going to bash so much money on Sergey Pavlovich, it's not even funny. Good luck with the fight card, guys. Hopefully you guys win. Hopefully you guys join in for the, uh, the stream, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.